Well, for some of these guys, it started on February the 15th. The pitchers and catchers reported to spring training in Fort Myers. That was a long, long time ago, wasn't it? And what started then boils down to one inning. In a one to nothing game, the sixth game of the 1985 World Series. And the Royals need one to tie and two to win. The Cardinals need three outs to win the World Series. The Royals need two runs to carry it into tomorrow night. One to nothing tonight. Little different situation. We'll see how he handles it. Meanwhile, George Orda will pinch hit for Motley. So here's an inning that hasn't even started, and we've had three changes. A pinch hitter, a new pitcher, and then a pinch hitter for the pinch hitter. Orda looks at a strike on the outer hand. Now Boney on deck and then Sunberg. Little squibber to the right side. Worrell races over to cover. The throw doesn't get him. Worrell got to the bag and an argument here. And here comes Herzog amongst the other quartet. He can. I think he tries to go for the ball. And his argument is he gets the side of the bag. Looks like he's out. Again, Clark with the, the toss. Oh, yes. Balboni has singled, flied out, and walked. A manager's job is to work within the limitations of his player. And I'm not sure if Steve Balboni can bunt. And the Cardinals don't expect him to. He pops it up in foul ground, and Clark comes over to the dugout with Porter, and Clark doesn't know where he is and can't make the play. And what's happening in the ninth inning, and you can see the shoulder hunch, Clark has spent his whole career in right field. He has made a pretty good adjustment to first base, but he came off the bag, and I'm not saying he made the mistake on a motley ball, but he's been involved now in the first two plays of the ninth inning. at second. Now he starts to back up. But he's going to bunt with two strikes. Lays it down. Worrell looks at third, throws, and gets him on a close play at third. And that couldn't be any closer. away from Porter and the runners move up. And you can see the four fingers held up by Hal Lanier. Concepcion at third. Sunberg at second. It's up to Alex Gordon. Here's the 0-1. That's in the air to left center. That ball is down. And it gets passed to the wall. Gordon is going to dig for third. A mistake in the outfield. And he will hold there with two out. Salvador Perez, the 2-2. Two -two.
Einstein. The 2014 fantasy baseball season was a real barn burner, with a tight battle for the championship and a tie for third place to boot. The battle for 11th place was equally hard fought, and that's where we'll start this year's recap with 12th place finisher, Polish Sausage. It was a season of shattered expectations and missed opportunities for Polish Sausage. Top pitcher Cliff Lee spent his season on and off the disabled list with elbow problems, and when he managed to make it on the field, he only produced subpar numbers. On top of that, he had ninth round pick catcher Brian McCann and midseason acquisition Will Myers, who, from what I can put together, spent their entire seasons getting struck out by Asians. Fat ones. Worse still is that this was probably the highlight of Justin Verlander's season. Oh, that's adorable. Maybe you should have spent less time taking cell phone pictures of her and more time focusing on your pitching. Velocity sucked. But it wasn't all bad news. The 13th round selection and subsequent stash of Matt Harvey, sidelined for the season due to Tommy John surgery, could pay big dividends in 2015 if he returns to form. Same goes for pitcher Jose Fernandez, who Polish hopes to have back around midseason. With a return to form from those two promising young pitchers and a repeat performance from 2014 MVP Christian Yelich, we could see Polish back in the thick of things this season. 
Everybody loves the Cinderella story. Boy, how about the nice swing through Christian Yellich this afternoon? Double down. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you like that shit, man? What could one say about Travis's 2014 season? It started off well. No, nah, that's a lie. It started off terrible. It ended terrible. There's Travis right there. Travis is what you might call a rare animal, blessed with both great taste in beverages and clothing. This is Travis's truck. It's a 2006 Chevy Silverado Z71 with a 5.3 liter V8 under the hood and a 4 speed automatic transmission. It's only got 65,000 miles on it and it's in tits condition. Kelly Blue Book value $12,000. Travis price $11,500. How do I know all this, you ask? It's because Travis spent his entire draft on the phone trying to sell this truck. It was a tedious act of multitasking that would have shaken even the most seasoned fantasy baseball veteran or used car salesman. But arguably the worst mistake Travis made was to go with his gut on the closers. Despite his obvious shortcomings in strategy, Travis had seen the writing on the wall. Before the calendar turned to May, he dealt most of the major players on his team for one Justin Upton, who would become his top keeper in 2015. Upton joins outfielder Carlos Gonzalez, pitcher Masahiro Tanaka, and youngsters Yordano Ventura and Javier Baez to form the core of the Emerson Tigers keeper crew. So far, Chris's domination of multiplayer social network games has yet to transfer over to the fantasy baseball diamond. But if his performance in Mafia Wars is any indication, he'll soon be climbing up the rungs of the standings in the same fashion as when he rose to be Mafia Don of Blue Cheesy Crime Family. And anybody thinking about crossing him should be wary. We all know what happened to rival boss Giancarlo Murillo when he tried to muscle Chris's uncle out of the family business. Talk is cheap, motherfucker! But I digress. Back to baseball. Chris retooled his team last year to turn them into a contender for this year. Building around three-time World Series champion and former MVP Buster Posey, Chris then added Ryan Braun and acquired Mookie Betts, Xander Bogarts, and Jorge Soler to give him a strong core for 2015. This is Mafia Wars, welcome to the family Either you're my enemy or you stand with me Just an everyday player with a mob that's big Mess with us, we gon' have some new graves to dig My health is all good, my energy's relentless My Mafia humongous As the season began last year, the question on everybody's mind was which version of Savage would show up this year. 2012 version that finished in 10th place, or the 2013 version that finished in 11th place. Turns out it was neither, as Savage scratched and clawed his way up to 9th place in a 42.5 point finish. His strategy was so foolproof that he only made 22 moves all season, and ended up calling it quits on August 13th. In Savage's defense, when you have Jared Dyson and Jake Marisnik, you don't need much else. Many league mates were befuddled when Savage expressed remorse that the season had ended, we assumed he was in full-on fantasy football mode by then. Little piece of advice, don't spread yourself too thin. Whichever version of Savage we get this year, he'll be comforted by the addition of infielder Anthony Rendon. Savage got Rendon last year for the low, low price of one Hyunjin Ryu, and Rendon represents an excellent building block to build his franchise around. Best of luck, Savage. Rendon, that's a loud noise to left field. It is playing. Also, you owe me 20 bucks. Andrew had that big 
tight game against the Colorado Rockies where he went five for six. On the rest of the road trip, he had one for 22. This was the scene in 2005 when Sully's last won a championship with a league record 115 points. Andrew Jones hit 51 home runs and Alex Rodriguez hit 48 of his own while winning the AL MVP award and Gwen Stefani topped the charts. You get the idea, it was a long time ago. Today's Sully squad looks a little different. Though he does have a 2005 star of the Regulators, Elder Pools. He also goes to war with the youngsters Corey Dickerson, Steven Strasburg, and elite shutdown closer Craig Kimbrell. With a core of players as talented as this, Sully should be a force to be reckoned with in 2015. I don't really know anything about Gary. I know he does his best work at night between the hours of 1 and 4 a.m. But what else does he do during those long hours throughout the night? Questions that I don't have answers for. One thing we know for sure is that he has a great eye for acquiring pitching talent off the creation list as he showed when he picked up Jake Arrieta, Jacob deGrom, and reliever Dylan Betances. He also blew the league away with his 8th round selection of Jose Abreu, who turned out to be a monster. And then at the trade deadline, he flipped Abreu from first baseman Paul Goldschmidt. These facts are undisputed, but the rest of Crimson King's story remains shrouded in mystery. Y'all check it. Call Lil C's. Tell that motherfucker to bring me some no, motherfucking weed no, from the hospital. No, fuck that. Notorious. Tell that reporter to go pick up 10,000 from Dez and go no, check about like 20 G's from Gino. Notorious. Tell that motherfucker to get this nigga next door. I'm out of here. This nigga be showing all night. I can't sleep. When Jeff walked into the 2013 fantasy baseball draft with a Starship computer, everyone just about sh their f***ing panties. It soon became clear to the league that Jeff was not lacking in confidence, as evidenced by his two-page post-draft day manifesto. We soon realized that this confidence was merely an intimidation tactic honed during his 15-year Magic the Gathering career. Fresh off a win at the Magic the Gathering National Championships, Jeff took over a last place team, and faster than you can say Shiv on Dragon, he traded his best asset Ian Kinsler for starting pitcher ace Madison Bumgarner. Bumgarner would prove to be a key component to Jeff's success in the league, and a year later Jeff added another top flight ace to his rotation, Court Kluber. With a supporting cast that includes Carlos Gomez, Josh Donaldson, and the speedy Jose Altuve, Jeff's looking to make some big moves in 2015 as he's taken a last place team and turned them into a contender in under two years. Best of luck to you this year, Jeff. We're all happy to have you in the league. Besides having the best attendance record of any manager living outside the town of Bar Harbor, all Bodie's done since coming into the league is establish one of the best young keeper crews around. With youngsters like George Springer, 
First baseman Anthony Rizzo. Power hitting outfielder Bryce Harper. Bad news Bodie is going to scare some people in 2015. If John can keep it to three glasses of wine or less on draft night, he may just have the best shot in the league at first place finish for the simple reason that he has Mike Trout. As if it wasn't enough that John has the number one player, Mike Trout, he also pairs him with the number two player, Andrew McCutcheon, who is a freak of nature. When you add in the other first rounder, Jose Abreu, the up and comer Nolan Arenado, and a solid pitching staff chaired by Johnny Cueto and Aroldis Chapman, you've got a recipe for success. Jump off, nobody gonna know.